Hello again, future respiratory therapists. So Johan and Joe too want to know about pulmonary function testing and how you interpret pulmonary function testings. Two different questions, but basically about the same thing. One was how do you use the FEV1? Um, the other one was just in general, can you talk about PFTs? So I'm gonna do that now. Now here's the deal, PFTs, in my opinion, when I talk to respiratory therapy students, is a, probably one of the most challenging classroom courses to grasp. And it's typically in like an advanced patient assessments course or a diagnostics course or something like that. And typically students don't like it because it's challenging, because it's hard, and quite frankly, because a lot of students find PFTs as being boring. Okay, But it's on your board exams. It's important to understand. And the concepts that come from it are important. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break PFTs down into multiple parts. So this is just part one. In this video, I'm just going to talk about the FVC, the FEV1, and the FEV1 to FVC ratio. Okay, Those are the three primary numbers you need using a spirometry, a FVC maneuver, to start you on your path to figuring out if it is obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease. Now, of course, this is all predicated on the fact that you understand what obstructive lung disease means and what restrictive lung disease is. And if you don't, here you go real quick. Obstructive lung diseases, there's five of them. CBABE, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. Those five diseases make up the five obstructive lung diseases. And what that means is that these patients, these diseases present an airway resistance problem that creates an obstruction to flow, which means these patients can't effectively get air out of their lungs because of the increase in airway resistance. Okay, now when you talk about restrictive lung disease, you're talking about things such as pneumonia, atelectasis, pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary edema, things such as that, okay? These patients have no problem getting the air out of their lungs. They have a problem taking volume in. So obstructive lung disease is obstructed to expiratory flows. Restrictive lung diseases are restricted to volume. That's the beginning foundation piece, okay? Now, let's break it down and talk about PFTs. You have FVC, FEV1, and FEV1%. Now, the FEV1% is when you do FEV1 divided by FVC, okay? So, when you divide FEV1 by FVC, you'll get the FEV1%. Or it may be expressed as FEV1 to FVC ratio. Either way, it's the same thing. Okay? Now, what you're looking for are normal values. So FVC, <clears throat> less than 80%. FEV1, less than 80%. FEV1%, less than 70%. Those are the numbers you need to remember. Okay? Now, when you're talking obstructive lung disease, they may have a decreased or a normal FVC. Okay? They may or they sh will have a decreased FEV1. Now remember, I told you that obstructive lung diseases are obstructed to flows, which means they can't get the air out. The FEV1 is forced expiratory volume in the first second of a performed FVC, forced vital capacity. You have the patient taking a big deep breath as deep as they can, force it out as fast as they can and as long as they can. They keep blowing out, 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 keep going. Okay, now this should make sense because if an obstructive lung disease cannot, if they're obstructed to flows, then they're not going to be able to get out most of their volume in the first second of exhalation. 
That's what the FEV1% tells you. This says that most normal non-obstructive lung diseases can exhale greater than 70% of the volume in their lungs within the first second. Most non-obstructive lung disease patients can exhale greater than 70% of the volume in their lungs within the first second of exhalation when they exhale forcefully. Okay? That's the patient that is not obstructed to flow. Our obstructive lung diseases are obstructed to flow. So will FEC be less than... than 80% with on the FEC, it could be or it could be normal. You can't use the FEC by itself to diagnose obstructive lung disease because they may be able to exhale for 12 or 13 or 14 seconds and reach an almost normal an 85 or 90% FEC. Their decreased FEV1 will definitely be less than 80%. Old is obstructive lung disease. Okay? FVC less than 70% is your indicator that is an obstructive lung disease. Now let's talk about restrictive lung diseases. Restrictive lung diseases can't take in the normal or, or predicted volume that they're predicted because why? They're restricted to volume. So their FVC is going to be less than 80% restrictive lung disease. If they can't take in their predicted volume, then there's no way they can exhale in the first second the predicted volume that should be exhaled in the first second. So this could also tell you restrictive lung disease. Okay? Now here's the difference. A restrictive lung disease patient may have a decreased FVC because they're restricted to volume, which will lead to a decreased FEV1, again, because they're restricted to volume. But the little bit of volume they can take in, they can get it all out in the first second. So, restrictive lung disease will have an FEV1 of greater than 70%, which says... The patient couldn't get very much volume in, but the volume they got in, all came, majority of it, greater than 70% of it, came out in the first second. That's your indication of a restrictive lung disease. So the answer to breaking down PFTs is fairly simple. Okay, I'm not going to get into combined processes here. Just when you look at a PFT, if your FEV 1% is less than 70%, then you're looking at obstructive lung disease. If it's greater than 70%, then it's either restrictive lung disease or it's normal. How do I know which one? Go back and look at your FVC, FEV1. If they're both decreased less than 80%, then, and your, F, and your FEV1% is greater than 70, then you have a restrictive lung disease. If your FVC is normal, and your FEV1 is normal, and your FEV1% is greater than 70%, then you have neither an obstructive or a restrictive lung disease. Okay. Now let's talk about how the spirometry actually looks when you draw this. Okay. Because you can oftentimes tell just by looking at the flow volume loop. Okay. So this is the flow volume loop. So if this is normal, okay, that's normal. What you're going to see with the obstructive lung disease, let me do this like this. Let me draw three different ones, okay? So I'm going to have to draw them smaller, but I think you can see them. Normal looks like this, okay? Obstructive will be scooped out. You see that scoop right there? That's an obstructive lung disease. That's your decrease in flows. You give this person a bronchodilator and then they blow like this. 
and that's normal, this person responded to the bronchodilator therapy. That's an obstructive lung disease. Now, restrictive will look more like this. Okay? This is restrictive lung disease. So here's the thing. On a flow volume loop, if you observe something that looks scooped out, you're thinking obstructive lung disease. If you're thinking something that looks like a witch's hat, then now you're thinking restrictive lung disease. If you see something that's normal and it simply traces basically the normal predicted values, then it's a normal pulmonary function. It's a normal, there's not a restrictive or an obstructive lung disease present. Okay, so now let's tie it all together. We're going to put some numbers up here on the board, okay? So, FVC equals 50%. FEV1 equals 50%. Right now, what's the problem? Is it normal? Absolutely not. Is it obstructive? Maybe. Is it restrictive? Maybe. Do we know which one it is? No. Not until we look at the FEV1%. When we look at that, we see that this FEV1% is 82%. So you have somebody who blew 50% of their FVC. They also blew 50% of their FEV1. But when you compare these two, they exhaled 82% of their total FVC in the first second, which tells you there's no obstruction to flow there. Okay? So this all equals a restrictive lung disease. And on a on a on the grat on your on your flow volume loop, you're gonna have a predicted that looks like this. And then when you see your actual flow volume loop, it's going to look much smaller like that. 50% FVC, 50% FEV1, but a normal FEV1%. This is a restrictive lung disease. You're thinking pulmonary fibrosis. You know, anything that's a restrictive lung disease, which is everything else except for a C-babe. So, so pulmonary fibrosis, pneumoconiosis. Uh, any alveolar defect, anything like that, okay? Restrictive lung disease, this is what it looks like, okay? Now, let's say that we have 50% FVC, 50% FEV1, are they both decreased? Yes. Is it obstructive? Maybe. Is it restrictive? Maybe. Is it normal? No. So now, let's look. What's our FEV1%? Let's say that it's at... 56%. So they blew 50% of their FEC, they blew 50% of their FEV1, and when you compare the FEV1 to the FVC, that percentage or that FEV1 to FVC ratio was only 56%, which tells you in the first second only 56% of the of the total volume of gas moved came out in the first second. That is an indication of an obstructive lung disease. Now, when we look at the obstructive lung disease, we see our predicted mapped out for us. And then when we do our actual test, we see something like this. And that, my friends, is the scoop. And that tells you there's an obstructive lung disease present. Okay? Last one, your FVC blown is 91%, your FEV1 is 96%, and your FEV1 to FVC is 94%. All of these values are normal, which tells you you have a normal lung function when it comes to volumes and flow. This does not tell you 
that your patient doesn't have a diffusing problem. We got to go forward and do more pulmonary function tests to make sure that they don't have a diffusion problem. But as it stands right now with these three values, 91%, 96%, 94%, this patient is normal. Neither an obstructive nor a restrictive lung disease process. I hope this helps to the people that asked the questions and to all of you that didn't ask the question that are struggling with PFTs right now. I hope this helps you pass an exam and prepares you for your MBRC exam. Best wishes, guys.